Discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons, okay? Working hard takes discipline. Regret for not working hurts more. All right, my friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast. Very, very great episode for you today. I don't care if you've had a practice, if you're starting a practice, if you're a student, wherever you're at, this you need to hear. And these are things you need to start mentally changing so you can be the optometrist you want to be, have the life you want to live. This is the episode for you. A little bit of office talk. I'm taking my shots. I'm making some moves. Closing thought of the episode. This is the Ultimate OD Podcast. Here we go. All right, my friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast. Thank you for the shout outs, the emails, liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. My mind just oozes thoughts. Uh, the podcast is awesome. The YouTube vlogcast, video cast, whatever you want to call it, awesome because I can think it out and put it out there. Unfiltered in the moment thoughts. That's what Twitter is. X, whatever you want to call it. That's the medium I like to be on. And follow me if you're on there. You might learn something. If not, just continue to follow the podcast. Give us a review. I appreciate reviews. It helps us grow. Just want to get bigger. This episode today is real. I don't know where you're at in your practice journey. I don't know, you know, what you're going through, what problems you have, but I hope that you take this and you make yourself better. That's the absolute honest desire of my heart is that you are better and you go attack a giant after listening to what I'm about to tell you. So let's start off with a little set the tone. Um, discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons. Okay. Working hard takes discipline. Regret for not working hurts more. That's because discipline weighs ounces and regret weighs tons. I often say I look back 10 years ago and when I started and I regret the shots I did not take. I had opportunities. I didn't capitalize them. I wasn't sure. I was uncertain. Honestly, I was very stinking comfortable. I was seeing patients. I was making good money, still doing that. But I didn't have that hunger to be more than what I was growing. And it's because I focused on the wrong things. I saw the obstacles in my way. I saw the headaches versus the upside, right? I didn't have faith that I would figure it out. And that's partly because I just started out. Now, like I said, I don't know where you're at in your journey, what you're currently tackling, but Morpheus in the Matrix Reloaded says, you know, I stand before you with confidence, not because of the road that lies ahead, but because of the road that lies behind. I can stand here before you and tell you to have discipline and not have regret because I have 10, 12 years under my belt now and I've done this. You're going to look back in 10, 12 years and probably say, I wish I would have done X, Y, or Z. Right now, I'm telling you to take that shot. I wish I would have. Now, I was recently talking to one of my friends and he's doing awesome. He's killing it. Uh, he said to me, he made a comment that he's booked out four months. And I instantly said, that's a problem, a really big problem in my mind because momentum is finicky. And I'm not calling him out, but I want to offer my perspective. When I talk to him, he's happy. He's in a sweet spot. He doesn't want to see more patients. And I get it. I was there. I live that. Okay. But here's the thing. He has momentum. He has a good thing going. Keep pressing forward. And that doesn't mean you have to stop seeing patients. You have to see more patients. But get a bigger spot. Hire another doctor. Have more staff. Schedule accordingly so you feel comfortable doing what you're doing. But you have to take advantage of the momentum when it's at your fingertips. Because this business that we're in is fickle, right? You're going to be shooting up to the moon, the next thing you know, the bottom falls out. COVID hits, 
the world's making you shut down. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what seasons are going to come, what kind of staffing changes are going to hit you. If you have momentum, I'm a huge proponent of taking advantage of that. Stay moving forward. Detach from the moment that you're in, right? You have to detach and look at it from a 30,000 foot view. If I'm outside looking at his office, I can tell you right now, well, you're booked out four months. We need to see those patients. That's revenue we're leaving on the door. He is in the business looking out and is like, I'm making good money. I'm practicing the way I want. The business is growing. This is awesome, right? And I'm not saying that that's not good. Just know what you're going for. If you tell me that you want a business, run it like a business. If you tell me you're happy in your job, and you like that, that's fine, but don't misconstrue this, that you're a businessman, that you're running a business and you're trying to make it the most efficient. For example, this year I'm hoping to do 1.2 million by myself, single doctor location, and 20 years ago, there's an office that's been around. They might be 25 years now, right? Now, why do I bring that up? Not to be braggadocious, but that office, if they were aggressive, if they were hungry, there's no reason I should have come into the backyard and taken out $1.2 million of revenue that they could be seeing. Think about that, right? If you are complacent, if you're happy, there's someone like me lurking in the woods that's gonna come and take a piece of your pie. You have four months booked out. I don't care how great of a doctor you are, those patients are gonna try to get care quicker. They want to be seen. We're in a feed me now world. I can click a button right now on my phone and I can get stuff delivered to my door by 8 a.m. tomorrow from Amazon. And you're telling me you think these people think you're so good of a doctor that you're going to make them wait four months? Really? Right? And if I'm a business person and I see the demand and need, don't think I'm not going to come into your backyard and try to take a piece of the pie. That's business, right? So that's when I hear that, that's my worry because I was that guy that came in and did that. And I'm always in my head worried about the next me coming to take a piece of my pie. Now, when I first started, that other practice was my sole focus, right? The past three years, they're an afterthought. Honestly, I am not even in the same league as them. I'm my opium management, dry eye. Dry eye is my focus. How I do things, what I'm trying to achieve and accomplish. I want another doctor. I want another office. I want a big business, right? I want a lifestyle that I want to live. I love seeing patients, but I also love right now growing the business. I love the marketing side. I love getting a team and knowing what's going on. I'm never gonna leave patient care completely, but right now I see my, my sister and her son has JV soccer. Game start at like five o'clock. I work till seven Mondays, six on Tuesdays. I get out at five on Wednesdays and Thursdays. My kids are gonna have sports. They're gonna have after school activities they're, my oldest is in first grade now. In my mind, I have about four or five years where I have to figure something out so I'm at every single game. I'm not going to get that back, right? Now, there's a lot of things that I can do. I'll, I'll find a way to be there because that's my priority, right? But you can do that without sacrificing the business, right? If you plan accordingly, if you go ahead and you don't have that regret. You have the discipline to have the life you want. You have the discipline to have the office, the business that you want. Now, it's really easy for me to say, you know, I'm happy making great money. I make all the decisions. I have all the control in the world. If something really happens, you know, where I staff's, are, staff's out or whatnot, I can still function in this, this world. But you know what? F that. Big dreams, big goals, how can I say, honestly say to myself, at 40 years old, I've done it, I've made it. I still have life to live. Why stop short? And I'm more apt to take big shots now because of my past. 
This is where discipline comes in versus regret, right? Why keep pushing? Why keep adding staff, offices, headaches, problems? Why would you do that to yourself, right? Are you a glutton for punishment? Are you that insecure that you know, you're worried about the people in the woods coming to take your, your business? Or, in the words of my friend, he had a roofing business. And about three years in, he just kept adding and adding and trying to do more and more and more. And this is three years into me practicing. I think, no, three years into his business, he started it when I was first year out of Tomsky School. And that third year, I, call, I called him and said at one point, dude, when is enough going to be enough? Like, what, what's going on? Why do you keep adding on? He's like, I don't think it's never, ever going to be enough. I'm just playing the game, man. And that goes back to the man who loves to run is going to get further than the man that loves the destination, right? He just loves to play the game. He just loved the side of business, the grind. He didn't see it as a sacrifice work. Like he didn't see those headaches. He didn't see those problems. He said, this is the cost of doing business. This is how you get to the next level. And this is how you play the game to the highest of your abilities, right? Think about it. You can play, you know, freshman, JV, varsity, college, you know, semi-pro, arena leagues, or you can go to the big, like, big time, get to the NFL, right? To be in the NFL, there's a cost of doing business. Now, just just full full disclosure, uh, 10 years later, that same friend sold his business for a ton. He's now set for his family, for life, or whatnot. But you know what he's doing? Still grinding, still chasing, still playing the game. Because he loves to run. Right? This is where I'm asking you, if you're in this, do you love to run? Or are you going for a destination? And being able to be aware of what you're chasing, what you're doing, is going to be crucial for the next few years. But I'll tell you this right now. Year two of my practice, I tried to take on an associate, open up an office in Hudsonville, a much bigger market. And there's just some headaches. I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I knew that I was a cold start and I had to do so much because I didn't have other staff. So I'm like, well, if we start cold at another location, they're going to have to do X, Y, or Z. And I didn't have the foresight to have an actual business model right? Let the doctor be a doctor and plug a support team around them. Like now I know exactly what to do. And I paid my dues, but I'll tell you this right now. If I had 10 years in that Hudsonville market, do you know what I would have had just by sheer being in business, even doing it horribly, I would have learned, I would have got better. And I would have had 10 years of credibility, 10 years of patient base. Oh, it would have been awesome. I would have been so much further along instead of trying to do it right, correctly right now. All right. Office or year three, I said, you know what? I'm going to open a second office. And you know what I didn't do? Pick a great location. I picked a town about 10 miles away, said, I'm going to have three locations for two doctors. That was going to be my business model. Well, I opened up that second location, didn't hire another doctor and didn't see it through, right? I saw a lot of staffing issues, me having a lot of headaches. I didn't delegate. I didn't get a great team around me. And I let it, I let it beat me, right? And I quit. And again, what am I trying to do right now? Add another doctor, add more locations. I could have had three locations and be 10 years in, but I didn't have the foresight. I didn't have the discipline to keep going and now I have a ton of regret, All right? I had the momentum, I had the, I had, I had that but I didn't realize it, right? I didn't have faith in myself. You know, I didn't have the path that I have behind me now to say that I can go and make it, make it a head forward. What you have, if you're starting cold, if you're a student, if you're thinking about starting a practice, you have a ton of resources at your fingertips to reach out to me, reach out to people that have walked the walk. But I'm telling you right now, from experience, start, get going, that's the hardest part. 
just get going. Then once you get in, you're going to figure it out it's not as hard as you think. Now, it's very hard to do it right and do it good, but you will learn that. And the best teacher is actually being in the arena, having experience. You listen to all these podcasts, read all the books, talk to all the consultants, but until you get your hands dirty, until you start doing it, you're never going to learn at the same rate or the same depth. Okay? So get in there and don't have the regret that I have. If you have momentum, if you have a book that's four months out, do not be naive enough to think that that's going to be acceptable in today's day and age, right? And again, I'm not calling anyone out. If you are happy and content with where you are, more power to you. But when I talk to you guys online, when you guys text me, when you send me emails, when we interact, every single one of you says that you want to have an amazing, great business. Discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons. Do not let that regret crush you. And always remember, you're never going to fully know if what you're doing is the right thing. But as long as you keep playing the game, you keep moving forward, you keep taking your shots, you're going to be fine. Because the alternative is someone younger, someone more ambitious, someone hungrier is going to come into your backyard and try and take a piece of your pie. And I'll tell you this right now, that is where that regret weighs tons. Don't let them get the full hold. Protect what you have. Keep growing. Keep getting better. We'll have more for you next week. All right, my friends, a little office talk. So, speaking of playing the game, I am playing the stinking game. All right? Uh, hire a new staff member. Awesome. So, we're going to have a little depth. We're ready to rock and roll. We're probably a little heavy now in the staff member we that we hired, but... As fall hits, as there's always uncertainty in hiring, it takes 60 to 90 days for me to find a staff member. This was the right move. Okay, so we got that um, staff member in there, going to get her trained, get her ready to go, keep moving forward. By the end of the year, the virtual assistant, that's happening. Uh, I know if you're listening to this and you're like, just do it, I've, you got your text. All right, Dr. Ramsey, I got your text. I'm going to do it. I have a talk with hello. Uh, Roche, um, tomorrow, honestly, and we're going to go over what this entails, what it means, how the process works, but I'm taking the steps. It's going to happen. So I have a virtual assistant, have that new staff member going to be working on adding a doctor within the next year. That's fun. New office. Just had a meeting with the, uh, developer. He's ready to go. I'm ready to go. Getting my team ready to go is taking a little more effort and energy. Finally got the broker on the same page as me, lawyers on the on the same page. Stinking architect. All right. I need him to do, like, make sure that it works in the space that we have, the outline that I have. Uh, also need him to help review some of the lease details for, like, the white box build out. Can't get it done. Ah. But I will tell you this. The harder this is, the happier I am, right? The harder it is to get this process going, the more protected I am because so many people meet a little bit of pushback, meet a little bit of resistance, and they're like, you know what? This is too hard. I'm done. Can't do it. For 10, 12 years, I had pushback, and I said, you know what? I'm happy with where I'm at. Now I have this intestinal fortitude. I'm excited for growth. I'm I don't know what changed. Read a couple of books, Profit First, Mike McCallowitz, and uh, that's that. That's the main book. I read that book, and I've been like, okay, let's have a business, let's make this happen, and I'm, I've been going after it, right? But the office is going to happen, and I have a timeline. I get this office going. Once I get in next year, I'll have a new doctor, and then I'm instantly going to start thinking. Do we have the ability to add another doctor in the same location or do I need to start looking for office number two, right? With the mindset of growth, dry eye focused, myopia management, not pediatrics. There's a difference. Managing myopia and then just doing what we do in primary care, you know, glasses, contacts, etc. That's where we're going, right? The combination of those three things I think will set me apart, make the office stand out. 
I'm very, very excited. I'm ready for a change. It's time for me to start taking these shots and, and seeing what more I can do. I feel like I've scratched the surface of my potential of what my ambitions are. I want to go to that next level and, and grow. If you are anywhere in this journey, if you're trying to get your one office up to up and running, let me know what your goals and ambitions are. If you have one office now and you're trying to grow and add more or wherever you're trying to get to, if you're a student, what are your dreams? Send them my way. Iron sharpens iron. We all make each other better. When I was in um, undergrad and I worked at the Dow Chemical Company, I was telling one of my mentors, one of the one of my bosses, like, hey, I'm going to go start this practice. I'm going to start a bunch of other practices, and they're going to be lining up and down Lake Michigan. I said it. I had that dream, and then life started hitting you in the gut. It's harder, money, family, kids, not knowing what you're doing slightly. But I'm 10 years in, I still have that urge. Like, it's still in there somewhere. I'm trying to bring it out. Let the chips fall where they may, having confidence that I will make the right decision. I'm smart enough now to not make a catastrophic error and I can figure this out. Going after it. I'll keep you updated. I'll have more for you next week. All right, my friends, where or where has the time gone? Closing thought of the episode, and I'll tell you this right now. This is underlying one of the reasons why we all have regret. I mean, this is a big, like, 30,000-foot episode where we take a step back and look at what we've been doing, what we're thinking, where we're going. But dreaming is stinking fun. It gives you juice. I've told you, I tell you openly what my dreams, goals, and ambitions are. Part of that is I want it on record. I want you guys to hold me accountable and... I'm putting it out there, right? Not to be braggadocious, but really to say, hey, this is what you said. What are you doing about it? This helps me process and think. But there's also the other aspect of actually doing what you say you're going to do. I am so freaking sick of talking about this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to happen. Now, I've been taking shots all year. I've been racking up a couple L's. Just getting, getting beat up, getting my, earning my chops. Still ambitious, still going after it. However, in the past, me, you, I know this is a common thing. We are afraid of actually doing and failing, right? If you say that you want to do something and you don't really do it or you don't, you don't go all out, you don't put all the chips on the table, you can say, you know what, I... I never really put my full effort into it, or I never really tried that. But when you're like me right now, and you're doing everything you possibly can, every resource, every dollar I have, every minute I have to get more information, every door I can stink and knock on, I'm trying to do. And if it doesn't come to fruition, I have to accept that I just wasn't good enough. That would crush me 10 years ago. To have, I didn't have that security. I didn't have that feeling of confidence. Knowing who I am, what I stand for, what I can do. Like I was afraid to share this stuff with you because it, I let you know how I really felt, that I wasn't really 100% sure, that it was hard, I didn't know the answers, that it was a failure. I wasn't really good at this. Now I really don't think and care because I know I'm going to figure it out. I know I've got this far. I know where I'm going to get to. If I try and I fail, it doesn't mean I'm a failure. It means I have to take another shot. I have to look at it from a different angle. I have to learn from that experience, right? But a lot of you listening, a lot of you students, because I know that students, I was there, I lived it. If you don't do X, Y, or Z, You are now a failure, and that's how you define yourself. You paint yourself with that brush, and you can't escape it. And now what do you do? Who are you? What defines you? Right? I'm telling you right now, know who you are. Not succeeding does not make you a failure. You failed, 
but you're not a failure. There's a difference. So don't be afraid to dream and take action on the dream just because it might not work out, right? I'm going to end with what we've been saying all episode. Discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons. That's what I have for you. Dr. Willie out.